And so the spiritual warfare, as, as far as this goes, involves artificial intelligence or DI, demonic intelligence, um, and how it's connected to blockchain technology. Now, I'm sure you guys know all about blockchain te technology, how it works and everything like that. But I think we need to have just more understanding of how AI will have control of the blockchain technology that's going on. So with the spiritual warfare going on, as far as AI and, or DI, I, I tend to call it DI now, uh, it will control the blockchain technology, which is the same type of tech that will be involved with finance. Well, block tech is also, or blockchain is also involved with other things. We've seen the explosion of AI in the past few years, and it will be a part, it's going to be a part of the one world economy. So now it's the idea of how far will the reach be? How far will it be able to control uh, before the human steps in, before all of this stuff goes? Is it going to have full reign over everything? These are questions that I don't think we can necessarily answer quite yet, if at all before the rapture happens. I don't know, but it's, it's good to at least, you know, put our hands out, get some ideas going and all of that. So, Let's take a look at some surveys that were done as far as what's going on in the business side of things with AI. So according to a survey by Accenture and a note on Accenture, Accenture is uh, their CEO, Julie Sweet, is, sits on the WEF board of trustees. She's on that like top board right below, uh, um, I call him Charles Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> the past time I talked about him, Klaus Schwab. But Julie Sweet, who is the CEO of Accenture, Accenture's a mega partner with the WEF. Well, she sits on the board of trustees as well. So it's important that we keep that in mind when we hear things like Accenture. Well, according to a survey by them, 72% of business leaders believe that AI is critical to success of their businesses. 72%. Um, a PwC report came out and said businesses are using a uh, or businesses using AI have seen revenue increase uh, a revenue increase of 38 percent a survey by McKinsey states 39 percent of companies using AI seen uh, saw the investment return within a year uh, National Retail Federation says 70% of retailers plan the use of AI for customer service within the next three years. Uh, Deliot Service says 63% of companies believe that AI will help them create new product and services. We're already seeing that. We just talked about how they're using AI uh, to develop new medicine they're actually creating new proteins that don't exist. This AI is creating new proteins that doesn't exist to create brand new medicine. We just talked about that a couple of weeks ago. So now you've got demons in control of medication. What can go wrong there? Well, we're seeing that. Center for Global Enterprise reports that AI can help add 13 trillion to the global economy by, here's that date again, 2030. Then we've got National Association of Manufacturers found that 85% of manufacturers plan to use AI in the next three years. Why am I reading you all these random numbers and surveys and stuff like that? Because those are very large numbers of businesses and manufacturers and companies that are going to now be bringing in AI. And if AI is going to be DI, they're now going to have full infiltration and control of all of those industries, all of those businesses, all of those companies, and it can run all of that stuff. That's what's going on with this. That's why it's important that we understand the embracing of this stuff. We talked about the embracing of something just as simple as AI art, and we understand what is being done with that. I'm not going to go through all that stuff again, but we know that that in itself is not good. Well, that's something very simple that's being embraced by a lot of people. And people are just doing it for fun and they're becoming addicted to it. I wonder why. Well, now we're seeing the takeover of AI in all of the industrial complex, the manufacturing, all of that stuff. AI can take over tasks for the human and blockchains used for transactions for not just crypto, but also supply chains, voting systems, 
and all financial services. If we want to go back to a quote by Stalin, it's not who votes, it's who counts the votes. Well, if you've got, well, I mean, we've already seen that all over the world the past few years. But now if you've got AI in charge of that, again, what could go wrong? What control can AI and DI have over the systems? AI can take over not just supply chain records, uh, record keeping, but can automatically control logistics of demand, supply, packing, shipping, and distribution. So it will be in full control over getting everything out, food, products, all of that stuff. This kind of goes along, again, along the lines of my thinking that these 10 kings that are coming are going to be industry leaders, just like what Prince Charles was talking about. If you've got, uh, in Prince Charles, when he made that speech, he specifically said that these 10 industries can control every country in the world. So it's going to have full control over it. Well, if you've got AI here that is now helping these industries with all of the logic, uh, the logistics of all of this stuff going out, it would make a whole lot of sense that these 10 Kings would be industry leaders because it can all work in tandem in lockstep with this AI and blockchain technology. It's just another one of those things where I think it connects and it makes a whole lot of sense in that way. AI can automatically determine someone's credit score, a uh, social credit score. Uh, it can lock their wallets. It can freeze their funds. It can distribute funds. It can withdraw funds and it can run an entire UBI system. It can run an entire UBI system. So if you've got AI controlling blockchain technology that's involved with these CBDCs, Again, you won't have to have an army of people sitting behind computers, watching a camera, turning people's uh, scores up and down, locking wallets and stuff. You won't need that. If you've got AI in control of that entire system, you won't need all of those people. It can just do it all on its own, especially if you've got a, if you've got demonic intelligence in control of it. AI can control all customer service, reception and secretary services as well. AI is also capable. Keep in mind, all of this stuff does can be used with blockchain technology as well. This is the relationship between the two. AI can, uh, of course, manage all finance sec uh, financial sectors from central bank all the way down to retail. Uh, it can also manage all carbon credit systems as well. It's very important that we don't forget about the carbon credit system uh, on top of this. And then, of course, AI and blockchain is also capable of running all Internet of Things and Internet of Body technology from smart cities to biometric IDs to your car to your entire house. It can control all of that all at the same time. And that's the relationship between AI and blockchain. AI can also, and this gets very, very creepy. AI can also control the judicial system through predictive crime watching. It can control the judicial system through predictive crime watching. So that's like uh, the best way to put it is um, Minority Report. If you've ever seen that movie, it's all about predictive crime um, and it's can also be used for booking and record keeping and they can even use AI as a judge and a lawyer looks like the cops are after me because they don't like what I'm saying we'll let that siren go by real quick it's the fuzz um, but yes even AI for judging and even for a lawyer, we see what's going, uh, we talked about this like a year ago, actually. Uh, we see that China is uh, utilizing artificial intelligence for judgment. Uh, we, that's That's been going on for quite a while now, actually. Uh, then we also saw in Ukraine's 2030 video, I'm going to actually throw the picture back up. Uh, where is it? Uh, number five artificial intelligence in courts and e-notary they talked about how that uh, ukraine 2030 is going to have that as well um and then just coming out now i need to get rid of this picture i apologize there we go also just coming out is now the u.s is going to have their first ai lawyer 
take on a case. Uh, it's going to have this to take on a case for the first time ever in the world for an AI lawyer. We've seen AI judges, but this is for an AI, AI lawyer. How it's gonna work is it's gonna be on a smartphone. You're gonna put the smartphone in the courtroom and it's going, the AI is going to listen to what is going on and it's going to designate courtroom responses to the defendant through an earpiece. So the, uh, the defendant's gonna be wearing an earpiece and the AI is actually going to tell the defendant how to respond and help them win the cases. That's actually just going to happen here in the US. It's actually gonna happen. So now we're seeing that progression as far as that goes. If AI is indeed alive and sentient, kind of like what S. Matthew Lau said uh, when he was talking about, or the stuff that he's a part of, but if AI is indeed alive and sentient, it will be able to have free reign over all of these systems, literally everything. And if it's controlled by demonic intelligence, like I firmly believe that it, if it's not already, it will be, it can do the bidding for the Antichrist. You won't need an army of people. It can do the bidding. It can be in full control. Just like that. Blockchain just creates a quicker filing system for artificial intelligence to basically store all the data and quickly and efficiently. It can get to it quickly and efficiently.